It's time for a cup of red, so let's fill your cup with rad pop culture vibes. And now your over-caffeinated hosts, Mike and Katie. Welcome, everyone. Last month, we got into a seriously deep conversation exploring all the realms of me. This month, because you demanded it, we'll be diving into the other half of Cup of Rad and seeing what makes Mike tick. For years, he has been very active on his Instagram, so some of this might not be new to you all, but time to get serious and hard-hitting with one of his major fandoms, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mike, where did your deep love, even obsession, for the turtles start? Ah, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. (laughs) Time to segue into the... uh, (laughs) Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. When that show hit the air late 80s, it was so different from everything else. We'd seen talking robots that transformed into cars and other things. Yeah. It was a unique style, right? We had seen like He-Man and Thundercats and all that, but everything, they were all more big, muscular, beastly things from a bygone fantasy era almost. And this took place on Earth with these weird turtle creatures. And seeing that was it was interesting because we usually only dealt with humanoid or robots. Yeah. Right? Especially like real ghostbusters. This was almost something you could slightly um, see yourself as part of, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, it's it's not the robots. I mean, you can't put yourself in the eyes of the Transformers no. or something like that. No, no. But um, you could be a ninja. You could you be know? a ninja, right? And growing up with a lot of Disney cartoons, I always loved anamorphic characters. It makes sense. Right? Um, and that idea that now here was a cartoon that had anamorphic characters. There were ninjas and they were funny and they were, you know. Well, then between you with your four as a team as well, you have that mix that the different sides of the of, of a person's personality, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, when you get older, you realize when you break them up, really, they're one person. Yeah. But you have to split them up so you have that dynamic, exactly. right? So that you could have that, that drama and that turmoil and all that. Because mm-hmm. whenever you have a team, you always break it up. Yeah. So you can have that dichotomy I guess yeah something of it quad dichotomy I don't know what the right <laughs> word would be for that <laughs> but um the colors were fantastic you know that theme song you know Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles it is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Heroes and a Half Shell Turtle, Turtle Power. Power you know we have the the DVDs uh, comes in the, the Turtle Van um, which was really awesome to get um, but I, I I was just hooked you were the perfect age for it too. I mean, yeah, it was yeah, perfect. Because because as much as I still enjoyed like the cartoons, like the real Ghostbusters or the Thundercats or He Man or Transformers, I was still a little too young for that. Yeah, you know, I I'm an I'm an early '80s baby, mm-hmm. so I wasn't old enough for those. Really, I had a few of the toys here and there, but yeah. then this was really it was what 88 89 when this came out mm-hmm. so it was really i was right at that eight, right age yeah and for the marketing for the toys exactly you know so seeing all that and especially the toys like the toys from playmates back then were fantastic sure they didn't look like the the cartoon um all the all the designs were very different <laughs> um which, you know, whatever the hell we feel like yeah um yeah like they, they they did their own thing except for when they went a little later on when they were trying to craft some of the mutants that showed up in the show yeah but yeah it, it was just fantastic it caught my attention so yeah so all those adventures are just fantastic you know they they went they went everywhere and they some of those mutants like I remember like Ray Filet, the the man ray man like <laughs> you know or or Ace Duck or um I always loved Leatherhead uh cuz I have a weird obsession with Cajun things um, Very much New so. Orleans in general that was just a given that, that was going to be his <laughs> and it was voiced by Jim Cummings you find that out later and you're like oh it's Winnie the Pooh <laughs> as a Cajun crocodile or gator Jim, Jim comes is in everything and yes he's a gator you know and Slash I really like Slash Slash was always more badass in my mind and than when I watch watched it in the again. cartoon when I rewatched it any of them are any of them are way cooler in your head than when you rewatch the cartoon 
Yeah, we will because we showed our son, right? We're like, yeah, this is the coolest thing. You're gonna have to check this out. And we're just like, wow, this is corny. Yeah, this is awesome. Because like the toys were just insane. Yeah. So you think that all these years of playing with them as a kid, you build all these stories in your you mind. build your own stories, right? For them, right? And then you go back, you be like, well, this isn't how cool he was. What <laughs> up with that? I think that's why reboots fail. Yes. Is because because you, by we, that time, we've, by that time, you've created fan fiction in your head. Yeah, that's and your fan idea. fiction is canon in your mind. Yes. When Slash, like, took the turtles down in a mud pit <laughs> and was, like, king and took Shredder out. And you're like, well, where was that in the cartoon? Oh, that was in my head. Ah. Uh. <laughs> um, but, yeah, everything about that cartoon was just great. And, you know, back then, I was a bigger fan of Raphael. Mm. Uh, Cause he was cool But rude okay. yeah. Right And it. Mikey Right um, I liked Donatello Back then A lot too And he grew as more of My favorite As the show went on mm. Because it was the idea Of him always being More useful And I always liked That he always had The gadget To help them The vehicles The crazy vehicles And all that The but, come in and save the day Type thing Yeah You know But growing up The figures I had the most of Were Michelangelo Mm. And the reason for that, I assume, because everyone thought it was funny, because whenever you play Ninja Turtles on the playground, it would always be like, Mike's going to be Michelangelo. Because like, your Why? name, I guess. Why? Because your name is Michael Mike. Yeah. You so were Michelangelo. Like, you were Mikey. You, you have been forever be, deemed that. Yeah. So you get to be like the totally tubular guy, right? And then you get stuck being like, ha, the wisecracking joker, cowabunga. And you do it so well. That's though. all you do. You stand in the parking lot going, it's pizza time! <laughs> what, you don't do that now? <laughs> I scream pizza time a lot. I might scream it tonight now. Oh! <laughs> um, nom, nom, nom. Um, <laughs> so, you know, that, yeah, I, I really dug that. So it was it was just a really great cartoon. From that, um, I remember getting the Archie comics, because Archie did the comics based on the cartoon. Oh, okay. Uh, so you had the the TMNT Adventures, which was really cool, and got into Zany, got into some weird stuff, especially when Raph wore an all black costume, which was, I believe, a nod to Spider Man wearing the all black costume. Huh. So right? kind of about the same time. Yeah. So um, that was kind of cool, and because the, uh, the, they went to that battle world, and I thought that was really nifty. But as as you grow up too, you look and you're like, oh, I'm not Donatello, I'm not really Mikey, I'm not Leo, I'm Raphael. It totally is. That hot-headed, just sarcastic ass. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you know what? Again, with what I said though, it's all those different fractions, right? You have a little of everyone. Yeah. But you're you're Raph and Mikey. Yeah. First, those are your two. Yeah. That's your main combo right there. So that's probably why I like Donatello so much because I, I it's something that I wish I could be like. Right? Yeah, like, exactly. I wish I could have that tech savvy. Like, I'm gonna build this and it's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna take a tire and a. And a feather it. and a, yeah, right. Yeah. You never. It's gonna look like crap, but it's gonna like save the day because it's gonna fly us to the moon. And you're just like, how did that get you to the moon? I don't know, but it did. Yeah, your your love of Donatello has definitely exploded. So yeah, so you know, I had so many toys. I was probably the fandom growing up that I had the most figures. Yeah, I had a decent amount of He Man, but Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, was the biggest. Yeah. You know, I, I can think back of Mondo Gecko, Muckman, Mutagen Man, all of those ones. And then, then then, when the movies hit, the live action movies, mm-hmm. I think that's when the cartoon went downhill originally. So they, they did cross over then at the same time? Yeah. I, I'm still, I was still, too young to know. The well, there's 10 seasons, them. 10 seasons oh, wow, okay. of Turtles. I didn't realize it had run yeah, so long. Yeah. Uh, it ended with Lord Drag. Oh, okay. Right? So they, there was 10 seasons of it and then they kind of... Then they had problems like Rob Paulson left and then came back, and so Don Raphael sounds different. Oh, okay. You, know? I, and, you and, don't notice that as a kid though, but when you rewatch them and you see it, you're like, oh, there's where the problems were. Yeah. Or you know what? Go when, you, when you realize that Rob Paulson is required yeah. for Amazing Turtles, right? Yes, exactly. And we'll get more on that more later. on that later. <laughs> um, but uh, they even watch like some of the production changes too. Like, oh, okay. There's a lot more slips as mm. the cartoon went on. I love watching those and seeing the color changes. Yeah, their the bandanas wrong, yeah. change. It's fantastic. You're like, wait a second, that's the wrong turtle talking. Yeah. And it was totally okay probably when you were little and you didn't pay attention to the voices, mm-hmm. but as an adult, you realize, you're like, nope, that's not the right, right. bandana color. Right? So, so yeah, so um, when the movies hit, though, that, that original 90s movie with the Jim Hansen suits yeah. just blew my mind. Yeah. Right? Like, uh, they were it was, impressive. It was just... 
how do you how did they make these things look real because like that initial poster that you always see Mm -hmm. they kind of look like muppets yes right they're kind of fuzzy they they're more bright yeah right but the ones that we got they were smooth they were smooth and they were darker and it was it was zanier feeling like and but it we followed these stories that were darker in this theme that was different and it was a wild story and it was it was amazing watching yeah. that one that's the one that that got me wondering where they got this from mm. right because before it was just like well you know here's these these cartoon the turtles the cartoon was this turtle yeah. start for you seeing that for me i always thought that too and then it was like well where is this and then you know back then it, we didn't have any comic book shops in town and you went you went to like a we went to like a flea market you know, there was a flea market um, in Langley, I think it was, okay, or Cloverdale, or yeah. somewhere down there. And there was always a, a guy that sold comic books there, long boxes and stuff like that. And I had asked like Ninja Turtles, like he showed me that he had these ones. I wasn't able to get all like the original ones because by that time they'd become so popular, they'd become more expensive. And mm. you know, I was still a, a fifty cent quarter kid, you know, because the grocery store sold them for a buck, right? Yeah. So I was like. This is what I got. What what can I read? <laughs> and I don't want to read the Archie stuff anymore. Like, yeah, I want to see what this movie thing was all about. So I, I had some of the Mirage stuff oh, okay. back then. Um, actually, that Spider Man poster on the wall was from that garage set, uh, from that flea market. Wow, that's yeah. an old Spider Man so, poster. Yeah. You've had that since I've known you. Yeah, <laughs> nice. So yeah, so I started reading some of those. Um, luckily enough, as you get older and, and companies realize that people want their fandoms back without having to spend millions of dollars. Mm. IDW has done a great job <laughs> of bringing out the collected archive editions of the Mirage stuff. So I've got those. Yeah, you've, you definitely have spent a So it would be nice to reread some of the stuff that I haven't read and, and, and you see where the movie took things from. And Well, I didn't realize how old that idea really, you know, that it well, was. Well, this year's 35 years old, right? This yeah, year. like so, it was before the cartoon, before that, you know, such a different type of, of history. For mm-hmm. it. it was fun to see. Yeah, but yeah, watching the the movie I I like Donatello and Michelangelo more in that even though Raphael was a focus Mm. and you can tell that that, that's sort of everyone's focus everyone loves Raphael they like the the bruiser the fighter and Leonardo and then the other two are like it's the A and the B team just like the 2012 talked about that is true yes but I like the the silliness and the the, the friendship they had in that Mm -hmm. Um, I really want to get the NECA movie turtles I know I really want to get those every single time (laughs) he has batted his big blue eyes at me so many times about those but but Katie well, the quarter <laughs> scale is hard to, to get into because they're so big. Yeah. And you can't get all four. Um, your shelf is full. It's not full. It can be adapted. Anything can be adapted well, you if need you've to, got you need enough. to hang your carded ones yeah. on the wall so then you have, you know, shelf space, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not happening. It is happening. <laughs> That's why you're trading toys in, right? Right. So, but yeah, okay, well, I'm going to jump back to the, the, the toys, actually, okay. from the cartoon because I've got a couple out of package that I well, really you've, like. Well, uh, because in the last few years here you have now been able to go back and collect some things mm-hmm. you had lost when you were younger well yeah right? i lost, you lost a lot all of, your toys yeah i lost younger. all my toys and they were they were they were taken from you taken from me <laughs> um that's a whole nother some of the tur- some of the some of the turtles some of the turtles i had kept and then back in the day you grow up and you decide you're gonna get rid of things yeah because you need money you have a kid and you think that well you no the turtle the turtles the oh, they weren't part of that run no the, the the turtles were like you know i want a car mom <laughs> Sell some of your toys. Okay. I still can't buy a car, Mom. Because <laughs> back then it wasn't collectible. It wasn't collectible, exactly. Yeah, the original Playmate stuff was solid. I yeah. loved those things. They they had they weren't like the greatest articulation. They were like five point, six point mm-hmm. articulation. But their their sculpt and their paint was fantastic. You know, they just looked good. But that was also they were three ninety nine back yeah. back in the day. Back in my day, well, I still had toys some. are three ninety nine. <laughs> From when I was younger, me and my brother had them, and and our son yep. was playing with them, and I, you know, I had, I couldn't believe that they were still around and right. still playing, and they were like backyard dirt toys, and they yeah. were still in decent condition. Well, you know what I, I loved impressed. about it, you know, is that Playmates was so brave that they were just like, we're gonna just flood the market, we're gonna make At some of the possible. weirdest stuff. They went to, turtles, went to space, yeah. they became football and hockey and basketball oh, yeah. players. I had, I they had, had um, universal football. monsters. I had those. Like, <laughs> they, 
there were Star Trek ones. Like they literally were like, how can we keep this line going? What yeah. can we do? And then the movies it didn't have to be based on the cartoon. Yeah. And then the movies came along. The movie toys were weird. Oh, okay. The movie toys were soft. Mm-hmm, they were a weird. soft, rubbery plastic. Uh, they didn't have any like a lot of articulation, but they were kind were they of bendable rubbery. ones. Or? No, they oh. were bendable. They had. They still had the. They like, tried to make them real turtles. Yeah, they tried like, amphibious because like, it, it was like I think I think, they, I think I remember the package said like like the movie feels uh, like the movie or something like that. I right? don't want to feel them. Yeah, right? Like <laughs> that's just. <laughs> I want to feel the turtles, mommy. Yeah, that's just wrong. Uh, but um, yeah, no. The second movie, uh, the Secret of the Ooze, that got weird. Um, it was like they decided they wanted to do Rocksteady and Bebop, but then they didn't, so they created Raza and Tonka. Ah, oh, um, yeah. Now go back back to the original movie. I guess um, we did w- watch that one with the, with our son, um, and he was mesmerized. He thought that was really cool. We haven't watched the other ones yet. Uh, we got to rewatch Turtles in Time. You know, I think I actually <laughs> I don't <laughs> that remember one, that no. one. I remember watching the crap out of that movie, but yeah. but like yeah, Turtles in Time where they go back to feudal Japan as samurai because <laughs> that made sense. <laughs> it was like capitalizing. I don't know if what came first, Turtles in Time the movie or Turtles in Time the arcade game mm. I can't remember that was something I remember we used to always go to the, there was an arcade in town well, kind of in town but our school would always do like field trips oh, and okay like you they had like one field trip where you got to like sign up and do whatever you wanted and they had nice. like these super s- sops I remember always going to like the the Wonderland one. Oh, okay it's Castle Fun Park now right nice okay and I remember always like I'm going there I got turtles to play and I go and I just like throw as much money as I was allowed to. Was it like Street Fighter-esque turtles? Or was no, it? no. It was like, it was a, it was a platform. Oh, okay. 2D, like, like, like that? yeah, like it came on NES too. Oh, okay. um, the Nintendo back in the day. So when I got a Nintendo and I able to get turtles on my Nintendo, I was oh, like, yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> Turtle power. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Well, that's what that uh, loyal subjects, Donnie, that coloring. Oh, that was based on the yeah, game. Yeah, based okay, on the game. Yeah. Right? That was so, really cool. Yeah. So, okay. So now we got the movie movies here and then the next cartoons that was the next car well they they did the weird next mutation thing what's that that was when um power rangers basically the like, company that made power rangers seven right, yeah made a turtle series so they were like they were trying to like they saw the popularity of mm. the the live action movies Mm-hmm. And then they tried to make a series, oh, okay. right? And that's where they introduced the female, sis- the turtle, the long lost sister turtle, <laughs> um, <laughs> Venus. Um, that's a weird show. Um, it's like the Power Rangers. They needed to have that female presence. I don't know what it was. It, it, she wasn't necessarily bad. It was just a weird show, though. Like, yeah. It was the turtles were creepy looking. They had smushed heads. And then, yeah, I've, I've never gone back and watched it since, even though it is on Netflix. Yeah. Um, I don't think our world needs to. We happen. saw we did see the crossover episode when we watched Power Rangers um, in space. Oh, OK. And I remember our son was like, what's going on? <laughs> Why are the ninjas turtles? Turtles here. <laughs> this hurts so, my head. So the crossover, you never knew you wanted, but you wanted because it was weird. And then they did the Fox Kids brought the turtles back for the 2K. Okay. Um, everything kind of had a revival in, in 2000. You know, you had He Man came back and the turtles came the back. Realized the world didn't die when we went over to 2000. Right? So it's like okay, we can continue on now. Right. Um, <laughs> so then they had the 2K. The 2K stuff was really good. I, I liked it, but. After having read a lot of the comics before, and I know it's a lot of people's favorite and all that, I just, it didn't catch me as much because, like, I was a child of that original cartoon yeah. that was a lot more zany and weird and didn't follow the comics much. It blazed its own path. Yeah. This here, you literally could crack open episode one of that cartoon and crack open episode, uh, episode uh, issue one of the comic and follow it. Oh, okay. Right? They followed it really well and then it went off and did its own thing. But also the 2K was at a time where I was becoming a man mm. grown up. <clears throat> yeah, you weren't in that. You were <sighs> <laughs> Manly Manlyton. Um, yes, that's exactly what he was like. That's how I sounded too. I walked around like, "Hello, <laughs> you over there? I'm a man now. I don't look at turtles anymore." But it hasn't been collected fully, which I'm really sad about. I wish um, Nickelodeon owns it. I wish they would collect the entirety of it. Okay, so you could rewatch it and kind of get a sense. Yeah, because we we catch some episodes here and there, but it's not on any streaming service. It's just 
it's in the interweb floating into the ether you know um so we got to watch i think the first 10 episodes because they did like a few years back on nickelodeon they did a oh okay I got they it. did a, like a marathon mm. and then they were like a little snippet and then that's yeah nice. right <laughs> um but I, I i liked i had toys from that i remember that and those those figures were really cool yeah those were really cool but those are the ones you're thinking about that we sold because we needed kids toys gotcha, and baby okay. toys I didn't so, really I didn't know that show so yeah. I you know they, uh, unfortunately they all kind of blended in together at that point they're now, green and have colored now bandanas. I can pay attention to it <laughs> and I know and I, I'm, I'm cool now but <laughs> but yeah so I do have I, I actually through Instagram guy on Instagram I got uh, Donatello from that series it's carded still nice so um, I'll, what I'll do is I'll start posting some of my turtle stuff I'll post some action shots before the episode before, drops and, then we can do and then I'll post some stuff after the more color Collection. That makes I'll sense. I'll do action stuff before. Well, you probably hopefully have seen the action stuff before, what I'm saying. Um, you'll see collection shots after of uh-huh. the inbox stuff. Nice. Nice thing was the Toys R Us and Playmates had gotten together um, and made that uh, retro line for some of them. So I got a couple of those like yeah, retro figures. Yeah, they've gotten some really cool like collectibles in the last yeah. few years for things so. we had been able to get. I mean, now it's been longer than just the last few years, <laughs> I guess. But maybe the last five or six years. Yeah. But, uh, and then they made the 2007 movie, the CGI one. That one was cool, but they had those elongated snouts. They kind of look like crocodiles. Okay. Um, Patrick Stewart was the villain. Uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar Patrick was... Patrick Stewart was the villain, or Patrick Stewart voiced the villain? He voiced the villain. <laughs> but wouldn't it have been awesome if he... Just showed up. He was just like, <laughs> screw this animation, I'm here. Salt and pepper! <laughs> On your pizza! Exactly. <laughs> that would have been amazing. <laughs> but yeah, no. That was not a bad movie. I'm going to laugh on that one for a while. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is animated. Just Patrick Stewart walks out. I am a villain! <laughs> Egad, you knaves! Come at me, you turtle amphibious creatures, you! <sighs> okay. As I read from my Shakespeare! <laughs> right? Because why not? Yeah. Well, it's better than just assuming that you just say something Star trek at him. That Engage! Right, nice. like, and then we got quite a few years without anything turtles. It just yeah. disappeared. The world was lonely. It was quiet. It was dead. I was all by myself. Right. <laughs> there was darkness. Darkness fell. <laughs> and then Nickelodeon bought it. And then Nickelodeon just said, "Turtles for everyone." <laughs> <laughs> they just. <laughs> threw it out there um, and I remember seeing those initial designs and being like oh they're doing another CG thing they're kind of round they're kind of weird okay I wasn't in the boat of the people that panicked that, that they had three toes I could care less how many toes they have right that's a weird thing I'm sorry it's a weird thing and then we saw that that first episode and our son was what four I think and I was like you're watching this cartoon yeah this is happening <laughs> the turtles are back you're <laughs> watching them um and we watched it and it was just like oh my mind, god right, mind blown the the voicing in that first rob paulson like, was back yeah rob paulson was back he, he got to play another turtle he got to be donatello yes and this is where your love of donatello exploded right then and there yeah well <laughs> i'd always and that was he was always the constant yeah you know because like i go back and i watch some of the other episodes or i watch like the the when i did see those things and some of the voices i just didn't like for it and um but what he he brought a great voice to donatello they were all amazing um and even when jason biggs played leo he did a good job and uh and greg sipes as mikey was just brilliant casting yeah like that there's there will never be another mikey voice to no ever. no like, like even that, sean astin as, as raf like that cast was brilliant and yes. as much as i love the old stuff i i really was happy to be able to embrace the new stuff yeah because it was just it was so just it was it was developing ex- it was excellent storytelling it was a perfect mix of funny and and action and drama mm-hmm. and it was fun as parents being able to see it and actually see like life lessons in there yeah. but they weren't preachy nope. and there was still ridiculousness and yep. the crazy villains and well yeah that's what was really splinter cool splinter was amazing i yeah, loved it i think i think that version of splinter is probably the best in animation well, they were such a family mm-hmm. you know they were so well connected there was so much respect between all of them there was so much camaraderie yeah it was unbelievable yeah and yeah they just did some amazing things and they and they got deep they got insane 
insanely deep and crazy. Yeah. I remember I remember that first like season finale when Leo was going up against Shredder and, and, and Tiger Claw. Oh, yeah. And because that at that point they Biggs was leaving because he'd gotten in a storm over some yeah, past some jokes. Skill. Yeah. Right. And I was like, well, what are they gonna do? And then like at the end of it, like he gets like buried and then they go to New Hampshire and I was like, Oh my god, like what's happening? Yeah. And then when they brought Seth Green in to voice Leo, it was like, well, he's a different voice completely. And I thought it was really cool that that the creators and writers of that show were like, kids aren't stupid. Yes. They're going to realize the voice changes. And the fact that they did it, that Leo's voice was damaged and it took him like four or five episodes to clearly start speaking. Yeah. And they gave a reason by crushing his voice a bit. So he had a different voice and he coughed and sputtered for those first quite a few episodes of the second season. Yeah, I forgot how then well had, that was done. Right? And it was like, like, yes, you handled it so fantastically yeah. well that, you know... Because it, it was wasn't like, forced. It no. wasn't like, well, this was weird. Yeah, why, why did, did they have you, to describe right? it this way? Like, it wasn't some weird, unnecessary storyline. Mm-hmm. Like, it flowed perfectly. Yeah, he didn't magically, he didn't take a potion and, oh, no, yeah. I'm suddenly different. <laughs> right? It was like, no, I got hurt and stuff happened and boom. It was almost a, it sounds funny, but a life lesson that mm-hmm. things, sometimes you can't fully recover from yes, all things. Right. You know, that even, even the turtles who you can see as a superhero and can be really unbreakable. Mm-hmm. They, they do get damaged and you can't recover from everything. Yeah. And just that simple lesson, I thought yeah. it was really impressive. Yeah. So. And, being a fan of horror movies too, that yeah. second season, all those those oh, nods, yes. the, the 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 Jason nod with the 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 muck monster yeah. thing, and the, and the um the uh, the Dream Beavers, the Dream Beavers were fantastic. We had those action figures. Yeah. Oh, those were amazing. With because uh, they were voiced by the Crypt Keeper and Freddy Krueger, just <sighs> Freddy uh, Krueger Dream Beaver. I mean, how could that? That was just so amazing. Right. So amazing. Well, I love the I love it when it was Dave. I'm Dave. <laughs> <laughs> like, argh, it's so good. Um, and around that the exact same time, the IDW then um, with Kevin Eastman started a new IDW cart comic. Yeah, you love that. And uh, it was one of those things where that was completely different too. Like they they went a completely different route with it. Mm-hmm. You know, each turtles have had kind of their own like origin feel. They're all a little different, you know. The, the comic, they, they did, like, they were mutated turtles, but they were reincarnated souls of, of a past, like, brothers and father oh, as wow, well. Okay. So they got into some mystical like stuff. stuff. Yeah, okay. so, and that's a really good comic. It's been really solid. It's it's waning now, I think, after Shredder's death and all that, but so apparently he's thing. coming back. Okay, because you need, I, I think Shredder's just an amazing villain, too. Yeah, it helped them explore some other sides of it, though. Yeah, Like, okay. more tri- the Triceratoms and uh, the okay. Utroms and all that as I well. I guess there is a lot of other villains, yeah. too. So. so, yeah, so, the, but this book's still really solid. Like, I dig it. It's, it's, they, and the art in it it's fantastic. Yeah. Because they, they took nods. I don't know what came first and how they blended it because it was like the IDW kind of looked like the Nick Turtles and the Nick Turtles kind of looked like IDW Turtles. Oh, okay. Right? They both kind of had that that they had the hand wraps and the the, the simple leather, you know. Mm. Um, it was cool in the um, comic is when Splinter hands out their colors. Their colors are like their belts. Oh, okay. Like, to match their kind of... He gives them reason for each of, each of them. Oh. Okay. Right. They each represent the color represents something of their personalities. Speaking and all that. of the color for the thing, I I remember when you showed me the original comic <laughs> that when, and because they're just black and white mm-hmm. because they were just what itty bitty. There was an independent comic, right? Yeah, and they couldn't and afford. And they all color. had red bandanas. Yeah, and that was it. And the only way you could tell them difference was that they had different weapons. Yeah, well, it started right? just all black and white, and then they moved yeah. to red, and they all had red, and then they. So it's like it, that well, original. They, like to me, I always associated them. Always had to have yeah. those different colors, and that was. Well, the colors idea. were created by the cartoon and the toy company. Yeah. Because they were like, no they kid's need, gonna buy just a red bandana. And they need to have something need enough to tell different. Them, yeah, and they were like, well, what? they all have different weapons. It's like, no, it doesn't make any sense. Let's just splash some color on there. Yeah, so it's, it's so, weird history. But now that, it's iconic, right? right? Yeah. Now now if you got turtles, you're like, well, they're, they have to be colored. Why, why would they yeah. have non-colored bandanas? Right. And I would still, if they came up with a movie where they didn't, unless it was a black and white movie. But that would be cool if they right? could do a black and white movie like that. Right? That would be fun. So we got the yeah the, so the twenty twelve that that show was so good it was like so good. I I can't I can't 
I was so sad when it was done. Well, yeah, and it did so many things, and it, the episodes were well, so. We, we deep. We looked forward to watching that every single time. Oh it was yeah, like, oh turtles. When episode. it would when it go on break, it was sad. It'd be like, right? when's my when's turtles? turtles? Just start scratching. And, <laughs> I need my turtles fixed, but yeah, like, and I remember because turtles hadn't fully ended yet, or had it. Or it was in, it was in a weird break. The actual series that ended it was waiting for the fifth season. Yeah, it was. In that, those they're waiting weird. for the, the the tales of the TMNT. Yes. And uh, we, I think we've talked about this before, but we were at a Starbucks and we saw Rob Paulson, and it was just like it's a dream moment, dude. You are my Raphael and my 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 Donatello. It was the greatest moment. And ever. being able to tell him that was fantastic because I was like, you, "This is amazing." We like, were at Starbucks down the street from Nickelodeon Studios in Burbank. Yeah, and just he was there getting a coffee, and it was yeah. just the oh my goodness! Thank goodness for Katie finally being forthcoming and walking <laughs> over to the man and randomly asking him, "By any chance, are you Rob Paulson?" Well, because it looked like him, but I didn't want to like impose on this guy. He's getting his coffee. Mike would have just let it happen and would have just been haunting him the rest of his life. Yeah, it probably would have. It would have. I think it would have. Well, I say like because then you would have seen him at at uh, Fan Expo and been like, "Holy shit, it really was him!" And I did not see anything. <laughs> right. So thank goodness. Yeah, um, he was such a gracious man too. Oh yeah, he was. He was. So it was a great, great meeting. Meeting him and and yeah, just being able to actually tell him like, "Dude, yeah, you're awesome." Yeah, the hype and, of all of that, right? And so. uh, yeah. That's something that I definitely check out is Talking Tunes if you haven't already because that's hilarious. He does interviews and, and little skit things with uh, other voice actors. Yes. Uh, definitely check that out because it's fantastic. It's good for laughs. Yes. Well, even just snippets of stuff, right? Well, you learn things, too. If you actually yeah. listen to the podcast yeah. that he has, you learn things. Oh, yeah. He's unbelievable to hear him talk. Mm-hmm. It's, he, he knows so much about the world and the history of the cartoons and the characters. Yeah. And he, it's not... It's not just his own little bubble. I mean, he yeah. cares about all of it, and it's fantastic. Especially when you get into some of the other ones, too. Like, we listened to the uh, Greg Sipes one, and we got to learn more about where Boo Yakasha came from. Yes. It actually has a meaning to it. It wasn't just a hype word that they yes. tried to create up and all that. So, But, yeah, Greg Sipes as, as uh, Mikey yes. was fantastic. Well, like, it, yeah, I it love was un- his voice as it. It was perfect, and right? It just, yeah, so perfect. Well, and you realize, too, the more you learn about actually Greg Sipes as a person... It matches him. It matches him so well, yeah. you know, and I think he brought so much of himself to that character that it was just yeah. absolutely fantastic. Yeah, right? I, I, like, yeah, if I was throwing a disc, as much as I love that old tune, I would watch the, the 2012 one because yeah. they, they you know, really created such a rich history. And then, too, now with us watching Doctor Who, I get a lot more of the, the <laughs> Fugitoid stuff. Yes. Because David Tennant was Fugitoid. <gasps> And he shows up in his spaceship and takes the turtles on a timey wimey adventure. Oh my goodness! Right through time and space. <gasps> oh, heads exploding! Over we here. might have to watch that season now. We might after, need to. well, see, every time you talk about that, I'm like, oh, but this, this we need to just watch it again. All of it. We have all, all the discs. We have them. That was a prize thing. I mean, we would go out the day it dropped if we could. And oh yeah, buy it. like yeah. it was a huge thing. Oh, I didn't want to make the same mistake as the the 2K thing and yeah, exactly. not have it. Right? Exactly. So, so what was one of your favorite villains from that TV shows, that TV series, the 2012 one? The 2012 one. They did such a good job with Shredder. Yeah. Like he actually felt imposing he and menacing. Scary. Yeah. He wasn't the bumbling Shredder from the old stuff. He wasn't. Well, because whenever you I know? watched the old stuff, he was almost like a pawn. Yeah, of he the was a pawn Ultron, of right. Yeah, of Krang. Krang. Yeah. Yeah, and it was always, you know, you'd always have Krang going Shredder. Right, he was just like, what to do, to do, you know. We will destroy the turtles from here. But he was actually and scary in yeah. that one. I mean, and in the new one, he was yeah. just like, you know, Kevin Michael Richardson. Oh, that voice course. was so deep and rich. And well, now we watch, we watch a show, and it's like, oh yeah, that was. Oh yeah, it sounds like Shredder. Yeah, it's Kevin Michael Richardson. Right? Okay. <laughs> and he's been in so many good cartoons too. Like, yeah, like they 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 stacked that cartoon with greatness. Right. But Shredder, I think, really stood out. You know, well, he was actually a true leader. Yes. You know, when he he brought those guys together, because Tiger Claw was scary. But yeah. he was, it was still Shredder who controlled him, who brought him in. You know, he was still the main head honcho yeah. guy and he was, he was a force to be reckoned with yeah. no matter if it was him directly or, but every time he fought, it was like, oh damn, he's yeah. going down. Yeah, exactly. You know, so. Um, my biggest thing that I 
wasn't the biggest fan was was when they decided to switch up the Slash and uh, Leatherhead being more heroes. Oh, uh, yes. But I, I'm assuming that kind of was to like get into like the anti-hero vibe yeah. that they, they that the world has right now. Yeah. Gotta load the bad guys. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, so Tiger Call I thought was a great addition because he was new. Yes. And he had a menacing approach to him because he was always a formidable foe. Yes. And the fact they also fleshed out Karai that was interesting as well. Well, she... Yeah. Yeah, she was a really interesting character, yeah, you, know, you know, for sure. And it really did a good job of when she did come around. It took a long time for that to happen. It wasn't like, oh, by the way, yeah, everything's great. Or, or you know, it was still a little... You weren't sure exactly yeah. how it was going to go, so... Yeah, so... Yeah, oh, it's so, so good. good, right? Um, and then then we got the Michael Bay Turtles. Now, I know he didn't direct it. He produced it. Nickelodeon greenlit it. I was in the boat of I'm gonna watch it I'm gonna watch it I'm gonna see what it was but I didn't like the looks I didn't like the fact that they were six feet tall hulking brutes I didn't like they, the bandanas and they the, they had weird the baby chains. faces and they had all the but I, I said to myself I have to at least see it before I can really have an opinion. Yes. I'm not going to instantly just go online and rage about it and yeah. cause, a, cause a stink. I'm not a person that does that. I need to see something before I do that. Yeah. After I do that, then watch <laughs> okay, out. Like, you know, if I've got an opinion about it, then I'll tell you about it. But I wasn't a big fan of it. Yeah. Like, I, I we own the movies. I have a, cup, I have a, a figure of Donatello. Well, our son liked it. He did. To an extent, right? I yeah. Mean, I think um, because it was for him, it was a new Turtles movie, right? Yeah. So. And it just wasn't that good. No. And it, it hasn't the, aged well. The Shredder well. thing, the, the villain aspect was really weak yes. and weird. Yeah. Like, I was really disappointed with that. And I, after seeing the 2012 cartoon and how much I love, love, love Splinter, mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to be hard pressed to ever make anyone better than that Splinter. Mm -hmm. But that Splinter in the movie was so not the same at all. No, just, he was not imposing. He was, he was, a, he was, he was a, Transformers esque. Yeah, I just. Yeah, they did not do a good job bringing it. And yeah, they were all cluttered. Yeah. They had so much, so much stuff, stuff Like, on how them. can you be a ninja turtle when you have chains on you? Yeah. How can you be a ninja yeah. and be silent? Yeah. It's just, that's not going to... And you know what I love, though, was that the the 2012 cartoon made fun of it. That elevator scene, right? <laughs> they go to do that. Mikey goes to bring that, and then they raft punches him. Yeah. Like, it's like, what the hell are you uh, thinking? <laughs> that was so, so brilliant. Um, the second one, Out of Shadows kind of fix some of it but it was too late yeah the damage was already done yeah there like there was there was some stuff that could have ruled the rock city and bebop were really cool yeah they did in the the outer shadows krang was a little weak because it was just giant swirling vortex mm. um like you see a triceratron in krang's little freezer tube thing which was really cool yeah um but it was overall disappointment for sure. Yeah, but and I, we would be such a high from that cartoon. Yeah, and what I think what sucks is that 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 those two movies came in similar to the first series. Yeah, they came in and then they they kind of killed the series. Like the first movie for the original one did really well, and the second one kind of tanked. Yeah, right, and the third one really tanked. Yeah, um, even though they're still fun movies, but then so like then but they were like. Let's try to get lightning in a bottle again. Let's see what happens. Oh, the same thing yeah. happened. We tanked the cartoon. Yeah. Um, granted, it was kind of cool to see this show go out on its own edge. The Tales of the TMNT was a weird little segue. It was like lost episodes. That, yeah, they were like that just should like have been should have been in the fillers. Almost. Yeah, they should have been in the the series, but it was like, but they weren't. that Monster Hunter episode was pretty awesome. Yeah, those, those they were some really, really good really episodes, cool. and yeah. that 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 kind of like that future one yes like the mad maxi that was cool to see like what their potential future was that right. was pretty epic but yeah those 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 paramount nickelodeon live action bay turtle ones they were not not my favorite yeah i'm hearing a lot of people there's gonna be a reboot i guess they're oh. looking to reboot it again oh um but a lot of people are calling for like they want it to be R-rated and all that and I was like I don't think you need it to be R-rated yeah I think you need to and a lot of people will probably won't like this statement but you need to look at the Marvel module mm. um, not saying because the Marvel module has a comedy and the action turtles are all about comedy and action Right? Yeah, I think they need to get like a Japanese director 
That would be cool. They need to have more of the ninja aspect. Yes. They're missing the ninja. They're li- missing They're missing the those fight they scenes. They have, like, teenage and mutant and turtles, but yeah. they forget the ninja yeah. aspect. This TM, TM, <laughs> TMT. Yes. Right? They forget that the ninja is a big part of it. I think that's the thing is that they, they, they need to they need to have some crazy action scenes where they're actually doing martial arts and they're yes. actually fighting something. Because they... They, they flipped. Fight. They flipped a tank. They flipped a van. Yeah. They didn't really. In the in the new they ones, didn't they fight. didn't really yeah. fight. They fought more actually in the originals, and they were in rubber suits. Yeah. Right. Like you need. They need to show. It needs to be like a Bruce Lee movie, but yeah. with with turtles. Yes, exactly. Right. Like that's what I want to see. Let's. Yeah. You let's know. Bring, bring out the ninja aspect. Go to those really simplistic designs. The basic leather hand wraps and no junk on them. Well, yeah. Go and look at you know what they would have been. I think this was the 2012. I love that they showed the cartoon. Mm-hmm. They showed them meditating. They showed them training. Yep. They showed them learning about the history and the art mm-hmm. almost of karate. And yeah. It was a big. You know. It was a, that was an important part. Yeah. And it wasn't, um, you know, otherwise, as I say, what was the point? There was no ninja aspect mm-hmm. in those. So. And now we're at Rise and. It, rise of the. Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There we go. So that's the newest cartoon. Yeah. And we've talked about that a few times yes. on here. I, you know, I'm not. I don't hate it. I don't love it. The toys have been pretty cool. I have all four turtles. Yeah. And. They are bright. They are bright. It I'm is. looking over them and they are like <laughs> bright green. Yeah. You know, I, 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 in the nicest way possible, they remind me of Mc, old school McDonald's toys. Man, if McDonald's toys were like that now, it would God, be I, heaven. Huh? I know, right? Um, McDonald's toys used to be awesome, though. Yes. Right? Like, they actually were actual toys. Well, like, half of my toys as a child were McDonald's toys. Like, yeah. that's where you went. That is why obesity was there, was because kids wanted McDonald's toys. And they were like, what, 99 <laughs> cents, 75 cents to buy a toy that actually was a toy? Right. Now it's a box. Yeah. They're always like cube weird things that yeah. are just complete just junk. Crap. Anyways, back to the rise. Um, but um, Rob Paulson is the uh, voice director on that. Yes. And he does play a character with L- L- Maurice LaMarche, um, the uh, lieutenant, foot lieutenant and all that. And that hasn't really been fleshed out too much um, yet. But those have been my favorite episodes when he shows oh, okay. up. And he's got his voice. So he's like, you know. And um, Maurice LaMarche is another wonderful human being. Yes, yes. So we met him at Fan Expo met. too. And we just hung out with Rob Paulson and Maurice LaMarche for a while. And it was just so amazing. Definitely. Definitely, we've said it many times before, but meet voice actors because voice actors yeah, are the most gracious, happiest people. Yes, you'll meet at a at a con. Yes, um, hands down. And give them your love. Tell them what you love about them and what 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 shows you watch because yes. it's just it's a great experience. But anyways, back to trolls. Anyways, um, it's had its moments. It's had some really funny moments. It's had some very meh moments. It's had some very um bad moments, and it's had some very awesome moments. Okay. Right. So. So it's finding uh, its its place. And yeah. Trying to figure out. It's like it is. wants to be a go, Teen yeah. Titans go, but it's not too self aware. And I think I've said that before too. Yes. Where it just hasn't. So I'm curious to see where it goes. Um. I saw through Instagram stories that there could be a crossover with the 2012 stuff, maybe, Bec- or, or maybe something. I don't know, because there was a bit of a hint that Greg Sipes was coming back oh, for something. Okay. So I don't know if he's doing something different or if he's doing Mikey again. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I laugh more to, than than our son does. Yes. Um, sometimes he just stares blankly at it and I'm laughing. So I don't know what that says about me. If I'm that juvenile <laughs> that a nine year old is. <laughs> but you know what, though? He doesn't. He blanks and stares and zombies well, yeah. for a lot of things. <laughs> he can do that at Teen Titans. Yeah. Go even too. Though. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, it's fun. It has all those same designs of almost of like the Nickelodeon movies that they made, the live action, because yeah. Raph's the Hulk with the, you know, and then Donnie's got the Ghostbuster getup and. Yeah. Know, um, so, I don't know. I'll, I'm going to keep watching. I don't know why it hasn't started again. I got to check the PVR for that. It's um, just up and disappeared. disappeared. Yeah. It's been months now. <laughs> I don't know where it is. But yeah, it's still a, still a fun show. But we've gotten so much. And I, I like to think of all the turtle stuff as as the turtle verse. Well, know? yeah. I mean, well, it's, it's it's been around for your whole life, essentially. Yeah. Well, I mean, this year celebrates thing. 35 years since the yeah. Mirage comic came out. So, exactly. So, I mean, and I'm not that old. old. I, well, I, mean, I am that old. But you I'm older. Old. But, <laughs> but it, not to the point where it was been around for your whole life. It's only been, yeah, yeah. I was only two. (laughs) Yeah. No, I was one. I was in Somewhere. Yeah. 
I'm going to be two. You're not 40. This year. <laughs> yeah. So. But yeah, it's a huge yeah. thing. So, okay. So looking at your your relatively large collection that I know you want to be larger. Well, it's, of, it's not turtle extremely stuff. large. It's not extreme. There's people that have more. I know. But so what is, what would you say is your favorite piece there? What's your favorite? You know, I love the classic Playmate stuff that I got carded and all that, mm-hmm. but the ones that are probably the more prized are going to be the Revel Tech ones. Yeah. From that Nick 2012 cartoon, because they're just beautiful. They are. And amazing. you can put them in amazing poses, and they are super poseable, and they look cool. And they came with those bases where they're like flipping through the airs, and their eyes go from white to. Oh, yeah, the to, eyes go to yeah. like the, um, focused mode. Right? Yeah, like ninja mode. Well, you'll definitely have to post pictures of those yeah. on, on Instagram. Um, and I love my Donatello from Figure Arts, the one that is based on the old 80s cartoon. Oh, okay, yes. Because uh, that sh- it looks exactly like it stepped right out of the tune. It does, yeah. Right? Um, whereas when you put it beside, say, the Playmate stuff, not as much. I never really got the Funkos, um, but... Well, because you like, for them, though, especially, again, with the ninja aspect, it's fun to be able to pose yeah. them and make them, you know, action figures. Yeah, right? exactly. So. so I've got a few vintage ones. We're going to call them vintage because they're that old. Uh <laughs> I like your cowboy, Donnie. Yeah, I got that from a buddy in Texas, ironically. That is awesome. Yeah, I painted him, though. I, I He was a little damaged, so I, I painted him, making him my own. He looks I've pretty cool. never gone back to finishing him. Yeah, you were painting. Well, for because for a while, all the Playmates went on. The Playmates decided went, that he needed you to fix them. Yeah, because they went from being really good yeah. to then Playmates were like, kids don't need them to be painted. Yeah. They don't need color on them. And then our son was like, wait a second. No, wait, not why okay. is this missing? this and all that. So we got a lot of the 2012 cartoon uh, figures. We got a whole box of them. Well, then um, you started painting the lair too, which was amazing. Yeah, and then I stopped that. Because... Because it got too... He got too demanding. Yeah, he was like, um, this little spot over <laughs> here needs to be this color. We're like, oh my god. It took the fun out of it. I was like having fun. I was like, yeah, this is cool. It looks nifty. And then it was like, I need you to do this, and I need you to do that, and I need you to do this over here. Like, And I was like... And you guys see that all the time. He uses it as a backdrop for his pictures yeah. all the time. It's a great Turtle lair is always there. Right? The turtle lair, that's <laughs> That's, that's you can see why that well I never had a turtle layer when I was a kid. Yeah. I think the, you we, the we turtle got that layer from was like more. the couch with pillows. You're right. Right? That was my turtle layer. Like I had the turtle I had the party wagon. Mm. That was about all I had back then. So to get that turtle layer was just fantastic. Yeah. Just you were like, well this ah. this turtle layer was purchased for a joint between mm-hmm. you and our son. It was because I know our son wants this, but I know Mike wants it. <laughs> but we got the we got the turtle van and the turtle party wagon from the twenty twelve. We got yeah, we got tons of those things. Like we didn't buy too many variants of the figures. No. Um, but uh, we play with them. We haven't played with them for a while, but uh, I got the rise figures, so I pose them on there. So yeah, I, I I'm just a, I love turtles. Yeah. And I think it's a great cartoon in all of it. So I look forward to what's going to happen in the future. Comic, uh, movie, all that. I hope we get some really awesome things. Uh, I really want to get those NECA turtles. (laughs) (laughs) Even if it's not the quarter scale. For um, Casey... Mm-hmm. Do you like him in the like the hockey mask version like that with like the old like movie type style or like the 2012 the teenage aspect? Like, which version did you like better? I know they're completely different because they fit their they're different style. Because April's also different too, right? Really different. It's adult or teenager. Um, but. You know, yeah, I like the look of the old 80s Casey. Yeah. A little bit more. But when I went back and watched him and he had his like Clint Eastwood voice. And, <laughs> what are you doing, punk? Um, <laughs> that was a little weird to me actually because like I'd forgotten about that. I don't know why I'd forgotten about it, but it was like the moment of like, what? <laughs> I actually think I kind of like the Casey from the 90s movie more. Oh, okay. Um, which is weird. Okay. Uh, I didn't think Steven Miel did a fantastic job of it because he was... He didn't really. He always seemed like he was. Like he felt lost in the new new movies. Like yeah. he wasn't like he was given any direction at all. It was just like he just showed up on set and they were like, "Sure, yeah, here, put this on." <laughs> yeah. Um, not saying that he's a bad actor, but just there was something missing there, right? Yeah. But they did give a little bit more. Casey became not so much 
a bit player yeah. in the 2012 cartoon. He actually he was, was part, part of it. Yeah. So he, he, he grew on me. I never liked the fact that he had face paint and a hockey mask. Mm. I thought that was like redundant. Totally redundant, yeah. It was just like extra steps. Like, <laughs> just put your mask on. Well, just, in general, I always thought face paint on a superhero of any sort just seems time consuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go out. Emergency. Let me yeah. put my makeup on first. <laughs> oh, no. My <laughs> mascara is wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I still like the look of the, the that one though, because like yeah, but there's different. I painted that one. I like the look how that one turned out because I yeah. painted his face white. Yes, I like um, not white, oh, but flesh flesh tone. You got rid of his makeup. Yeah, like because it, it, it was weird. Um, I like to get the rest of the Ruffle Techs. I got Mikey and Donnie. Yes, because um, those are my two favorite from that. And then I like to get Raph and Leo because I think it'd be cool to have. Well, it's the cool. Entire like, team. The Mikey, uh, you know, he has the accessory of his moving nunchucks. Right? Yeah, so it's cool because he actually you, you look at him and you think he's actually moving, yeah, and flying around. And it's really cool idea to have that for sure. So here's um, to another. 35 years of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles yes. hopefully hopefully when I'm an old man you know I'll be like I've watched over 40 incarnations of the <laughs> turtles you whippersnappers know nothing right <laughs> one can only hope right so. hope and dream yes well, thank you very much for sharing. Well, thank you You're for intense. making this Turtles uh, episode painless. <laughs> I know, right? I didn't even mock you. Mine was like intense interviewing, but you know what? Just to show that this is only part one of many to come because you have such intense groups of fandoms. That's true. That is true. You know, you've had things that really spanned your entire life. For me, so many of my characters are maybe in the last six to ten years right so you have things that are ingrained in your being well i dumped a lot of that though too so i was glad to come back to it yeah i, I like that i've got it sounds funny but i like that i'm not that stoic i need to be an adult you know you need a I'm, man i'm a I'm man, a man. I'm a, <laughs> you know i i like that it's that i can embrace more of the Hey, you know, it's fun. It's silly. It's yeah. it's me. I don't care. You know what? I don't care if you think I'm weird for wearing a Ninja Turtle shirt. Yes. It's what I am. Yeah. You know, well, you know what's fun? Like for me too, I, I love when I see someone wearing something Ninja Turtles. Like mm. one of the guys from our work was wearing a Ninja Turtle shirt one day and I had to stop him. I'm like, dude, I love your shirt. Yeah. Like, that's awesome. You have a Mikey shirt on. Yeah. And he just was so happy. Yeah. I was like, why not? Be why not embrace it and more? Silly, embrace know? it more and then we'd be more happy. Right? I think if we can embrace our fandoms and things we like, no matter what fandom, it doesn't have to be a yeah. geeky fandom. It can be a sports fan or whatever, but just be well, happy exactly, about it. Exactly. Just be like, just be like, hey, I think a lot of this people is grow me. up and think like, it's okay. It's Stay with the idea of the sports. I have nothing against sports. I love that idea. I mean, we've definitely rocked all of our Anaheim mm-hmm. Duck stuff. I have Canucks wear. Like, I love the idea of sports um, camaraderie. But why is that okay when it's not okay to be like fuck yeah I'm a Slytherin and we're awesome and we can like go together right or you know I love turtles or I love this like why is that not okay right it's a weird concept well it's like, becoming okay are, but it's, it's not sports like, are for adults and, yeah you know that's what you can be yeah that's okay but it's a know. weird weird like middle ground that's happening where it's like yeah, it's, it's kind moving. of okay yeah right but then but then it's still seen as still childish almost yeah. like they're not growing up because there's but so then much there's those people out there aspect, that, that, right? that, that have so much of this stuff that probably make more money than some of these other people yeah do. Well, you got to wonder, too, how many of those people who actually do the collectibles then don't wear the clothes Mm -hmm. or anything, you know, because they have the money to buy the crazy collectibles. They, you know, um, they don't wear the the, all the the merch for it. Right. But uh, so I'm excited to keep digging into all the different fandoms. We got quite a bit more. Do we know what we're talking about? Do we know what we're going for? Do we tell them? What, what do you think is the next one? I don't know what the next one's going to be. I think the next one it was going to be Disney. Oh, we're going to do You are a Disney my... fanatic. Uh, fanatic. Do we want to use that term? Because that seems kind of scary. Disney <laughs> lover? Disney. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> We've talked too long, um, but yeah, no, I love no, Disney. Disney. Anything you know, I mean, I've, I've grew, I grew up on all that stuff. I grew up on stuff that. See, for me, I picked when we did ours. It was just Disney princesses more. You know, we're just gonna go in the whole Disney. Yeah, I don't have everything. A, I have, we don't have. I'm an animation fan. I know. So we're gonna talk Disney animation next episode with the inside. Not next episode, but next inside Mike. Episode. Yeah, we don't know when it'll drop. Inside Mike's love of Disney animation. It could be any time. Dun dun dun. 
It'll be exciting. It'll be. There's lots to talk about. Yeah. There. And then you we know? got, what else we have after that? We're going to. And then we got Batman. The, Bolt the Bat, Bat family. Bat family in general. Bat family. Bat family. We have. Marvel. Marvel. And we have Power Rangers. Yeah. Those are kind of our key points. And I think, you know what? Just sitting in our room of collectibles and everything, I think we might need to do a miscellaneous sub fandoms sub fandoms just to talk about all like kind of your weird quirky things and um, you know there's horror and then okay. there's you know so other things <laughs> other things so you know what it would be kind of fun I think to just talk a little bit more of, of that um, you well, know you, even if it's a little bit of a of back both forth. of us yeah you know because I have some weird fandoms too for myself weird or obsessions random, random we had obsessions. A, we had a we had an awakening and we'll save that <laughs> She had a, a brain burst. I did have an epiphany, so, uh, so yeah, we can share that next time. Yeah. So. Uh, thank well, you very much for joining us and getting inside Mike. That's right. Turtle power! Thank you for listening. Love this episode of Cup of Rad? Please subscribe, rate us, and give us a review. Also, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more rad content.